what's good this is grits and gravy welcome to another beat making tip video in this video i'm going to show you in fl studio how to mix your kick drum with an 808 bass sound so that it's not muddy and so that it just sounds better so let's get right to it the first thing uh, if you notice i have a 808 uh, bass sound and I have like a generic kick drum sound the first thing you want to do is double click on that little green selector uh, I guess like that line double click on it to select both sounds come to your mixer and let me just shrink this uh, a little bit because we're only using two tracks <clears throat> excuse me you want to right click on the first insert and then link them all to the mixer so after you link them to the mixer you want to go to the effects for each track and add the EQ2 to the kick drum and the 808 uh, mixer track So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play a little quick uh, loop with the kick drum. And I'm going to record it to the piano roll. <clears throat> a lot of people use like the, like the little squares or the blocks or whatever. I always go with the piano roll. I just feel it's more um, flexible. But, you know, you can do it either way. And I'm going to quantize that. And this one needs to be scooted over. So this is what we're going to be working with. This is just the kick drum. And then I'm going to play an 808 along with it. Now we need to edit this 808 somewhat. So we're going to edit this 808 so that the kick drum and the 808 are fighting for space and on top of each other. So I'm going to play with the release of this 808 until it sounds right. And you just have to listen and adjust your settings according to the sound that you use. Depending on what bass sound that you use, you will have different settings than what I have right now. So now I'm going to record a bass pattern to the piano roll for my 808 sound. And I'm just going to do something pretty simple. So I'm just going to quantize this uh, 808. So that's kind of like step one on how to get them from on top of each other. Because if they're on top of each other, you're going to be clipping like crazy. And I'm going to edit it a little bit. I'm going to give it a little space at the end so that the notes don't clash into each other. gonna play with this until it kind of locks into place so that the kick drum and the 808 aren't fighting now see if you bring the attack up too far then it just kind of sounds stupid so you want to you know listen in, until it locks into place turn them down a little bit okay now we're gonna go back to the mixer now this is where you can really separate the two and you're gonna have bass, and you're gonna have that kick drum cut through the bass. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of some of this really low, I'm just gonna call it mud. It's not really gonna register on many stereo systems or speakers or whatever, so I'm just gonna cut that out. I'm gonna bring the high end. I'm gonna cut that out because there's like some air 
on this kick drum. Depending on your sound, you might not have to do this. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up by about one decibel. And I'm gonna find kind of like a sweet spot. I wanna get somewhere in the 150, maybe 160 range and bring it up by one decibel and then adjust the width to about 10. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna help the kick drum cut through the bass. Now if you hear this bass, I'm gonna do the same thing and get rid of all this high end right here. And what this will do later on is if you start with the, the bass and you cut all that high end out of that bass sound, it'll help so your snares can have their own space later on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the opposite. Instead of boosting by a decibel, I'm gonna cut by at least one decibel. What I usually do is I'll cut anywhere from two to four decibels. Now it's okay to cut by more than two decibels, but generally you don't want to boost more than two decibels. You're going to run into a lot of problems if you do that. Now I'm not saying that's the wrong way to mix, but I see a lot of people um, boosting a lot of decibels and I'm pretty sure that especially starting out that's going to give you a lot of problems so now I have the the 808 and I notched out those couple decibels and now the kick drum is kind of cutting through so that's pretty much what you want what you can also do is you can bring this one decibel boost over to about 60 and this is like a deeper part of the kick drum. You can bring it over here. And if you do that, then you wanna go to your 808 and do the same thing and move it over. And that's just if you want a more punchier sound, that's like a deeper kick. And if you wanted to, you could bring that notch down some more just to give the kick drum some more room. And that's gonna do it for the 808s and the kick drums. Once again, depending on the sound that you're using, you're gonna have to play with these settings, but this is a good general starting point. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, peace.